now it's about time we got down to actually using Jidra. The reminder of this course is dedicated to various features of Jidra and how you can leverage them to best meet your reverse engineering needs. In this section, we will begin covering the options you are presented with, so when launching Jidra. And then we describe what happens uh, when you open a single binary file for analysis. Finally, we present a quick overview of the user interface to lay the groundwork for the remaining chapters. And here, anytime you launch Jidra here, so we will first run, run the Jidra here. So anytime you launch Jidra, you will be greeted briefly, greeted briefly by a splash screen that displays the Jidra logo, build information, uh, the Jidra and Java version numbers, and the licensing information. If you wish to um, totally read the splash screen uh, to learn more about your version, so you can display it at any time by clicking on Help and about Jidra from the Jidra project window. And once the splash screen clears, Jidra displays the Jidra project window behind the tip of the date dialog and you can scroll through the tips by clicking the next tip button uh, but if you prefer not to see the other tips feel free to uncheck the show tips on startup like this and here if you uncheck the box and you find yourself missing the top of the tip of the day dialog you can easily restore it through the jidra help menu right here Tip of the day, click on that, and that's it. Here we will select on the show tips on startup and click on close. And if you close the tip of the day dialog or uncheck the box and restart the Jidra, you will be presented with the Jidra project window. The Jidra uses a project environment to allow you to manage and control the tools and data associated with the file or group of files as you are working with them. This initial interaction uh, focuses on single file as component of non-shared project. So more complex project capabilities are uh, will be discussed in next sections and lectures of our course. So if it, this is your first time launching Jidra, you will need to create a project. If you have launched the Jidra previously, the active project will be the one you used most recently. Choosing file here, uh, you can reopen this, uh, allows you to specify characteristics of uh, the new project. Um, and here you can, the first step is creating a project uh, to choose between a non-shared project and shared project. In this lecture, we will begin with a non-shared project. Uh, with that choice out of the way, you will be present that with a, this dialog here, right? So once you have entered the project location information and uh, after the project name in this case we will use typhoon01 and click on finish here and once you have entered the project location and project name click on finish to complete the project duration process and here this will return the project window with a newly created project selected here as you can see here and to do any useful work you will need to add at least one file to your project so you can open a file either by choosing new file like here or like right clicking on it or file here import file this here and browsing to the file you wish to import or by dragging and dropping file directly into this this project window here in this case our file is deleted so here let's actually first we will create a just a basic c++ file c++ program and we will compile it so it will show the hello world we will just simple c++ program here so main.cpp here yes and open it with some notepad and here we will include include studio.h here and after that we will integer main here after that we will printf hello world and that's it and after that oh sorry after that we'll we will return zero and that's it and here let's go to cmd and compile our project Is CGC compiler installed? Yes. So we will go to CD desktop. 
and gcc main.cpp over here main.exe here and there as you can see here that let's run this exe and as you can see we printed hello world on the screen but this is just a basic simple c++ program and here we have this main.exe here we will drag and drop this to jira in jira but instead of this we can also just use the press e button e keyboard e on the keyboard i in the keyboard and we can select the main.exe and after selecting this we will select file to import and that is it and here when you import something ghidra generates a list of uh, potential um, file types and provides uh, these in the format pick list or at the top of the dialog here and clicking the information button uh, to the right of the uh, dialog will provide you with a list of supported formats here which are uh, which we will describe describe in next lecture here we have gsf input format here let's actually make can we here dalbeck executable and so on so here and the format pick list provides the subset of jitter loaders that are best suited uh, for dealing with a selected file for this example the two options are provided in the format uh, pick list uh, the first is portable executable pe or old style DOS executable and raw binary the raw binary option will always be present uh, present in your science it's a uh, gdras default for loading files that it does not recognize uh, this provides the lowest level option for loading any file so when offered the choice of several loaders it's not bad strategy to accept the default selections unless poses specific information that contradicts jitter's determination so the language field here so we will just not touch to format here because jitter selected it for us and here in this language field allows you to specify which processor module should be used during the disassembly process a jitter language compiler specification can consist um, of a processor type an in indian uh, specification l a b e here a bitness value here like 16 bit 32 and 64 a processor variant and the compiler id here so we have several options to check here but as you can see it's uncheckable because jira already checked for it for us and the destination folder uh, field lets you select the project folder in which the newly imported file will be displayed and the default is to display the top level project folder but the subfolders um, can be added to organize imported programs with the within the project so you can select the extension button to the right of the uh, to the right of the language and destination folder fields to view other options for each you so you can also edit the text in the program name field and uh, don't be confused by the change in terminology of program name is the name that jitra uses to refer to the important binary within the project including for displaying the project window so it defaults to the name of the imported file but it could be changed to something more descriptive like uh, simple hello world print here and you can like you can also do it from malware from target computer and so on in addition to the four fields shown in this dialog you can access other options uh, to control the loading process via options button here here so these options are dependent on the selected format and processor uh, the options for for example main.exe a pe file 6x86 are shown here here and with the default option selected right so while moving ahead with the default options is generally a good approach you may choose other options as you gain experience here for example apply processor defined labels android processor defined labels we have a load system libraries from disk we can also edit paths here 
here project library search folder and so on we just we will just click on the cancel here we will not touch anything on it and the import options here are used again finer control over the file loading process so these options are not applicable to all input file types and in most cases you can rely on the default selections here and additional information about options in uh, is available in Jira help also so when you are happy with your loading options and uh, click ok to close the dialogues and you are presented with the import results summary window here you will see right here and that's this is this is called import results summary so this import result summary this provides you an opportunity to review the selected import options along with the basic information uh, that the loader has extracted uh, from your chosen file uh, and in this uh, importing files here or uh, here um, we have additional information that isn't reflected on input results which you will learn in next lectures and after that we will we can click ok so that's it we imported a exe file at times um, here we the raw binary will be the only entry in the form format pick list uh, so for example we can create some new text folder and that exe here weird code.exe and here we will edit with notepad and we will just write some codes here which this is obviously not a program but we will import the jidra and we let's see what will happen again we will use the shortcut and weird code.exe and here as you can see here at times as i said uh, raw binary will be the only entry in the format pick list so this is the jidra's way of telling you that none of its loaders recognize the chosen file Examples of situations that may call for the use of the raw binary loader include the analysis of a custom firmware images and exploit payloads that may have been extracted from the network package captures or log files or this is just a raw weird code that we write some characters in it. It doesn't represent anything on the operating system side. And in these cases, uh, Jitter cannot recognize any file header information to guide the loading process. Uh, so it's up to you to step in and perform tasks that loaders often do automatically, like specifying a processor, the bit size, and in some cases, a particular compiler. For example, if you know the binary contains x86 code, uh, many choices are available in the language dialog here. And often some research and occasionally some trial and error is required to narrow your language choices to something that will work for your binary. Any information you can obtain about the device uh, the file was designed to run on uh, will be useful. Although if you are confident that the file is not intended for a Windows system, you should select GCC or default here. In this case, it actually is not for any system because <laughs> we just made it file from the characters right and if the binary file contains no hidden information jidra can work with it so jidra also will recognize the memory layout of the file so if you know the base address file offset or length of the file you can enter those values um, in the into the corresponding loader option fields as shown here and here we have also text filter options again and so on now in next lecture we will analyze filters with gdraw